really good day. Like it's a really good day to have a good day and to share with you guys what's going on in the world of Seek the Joy podcast. But before we do, welcome back. Welcome back to Seek the Joy podcast. Happy Seek the Joy Tuesday. Today is a long time coming. Oh, I'm your host, Sydney Wise. Guys, I'm so excited. I'm like tripping up over myself. Welcome back. Uh, Today's a really good day. It's a big day in the world of Seek the Joy podcast. So if you will join me in a little uh, drum roll, please, you know, whether you're at your desk at work or in the car on the steering wheel, introducing our Seek the Joy guides, our Seek the Joy guide to podcasting and our Seek the Joy guide to pitching guests. I am hoping to bring a little more joy into your life. One ebook at a time. I am honestly so excited and so proud to finally launch what I've been working on for the last, God, I don't know, like nine months. These two ebooks to really help make your podcasting dreams and joy a reality. And almost two years ago, oh my God, it's literally almost two years ago, I had this crazy dream to start a podcast. And I say it's a crazy dream because I had no media or journalism experience. I just had a a dream and a goal and something that I really wanted to do. And at the time, the biggest question I had around podcasting was, how do I turn this idea in my head into a podcast that people will listen to and subscribe to and share? And how do I build a community and form connections through diving into this space and really through trial and error, I figured it out. I developed my concept, bought my equipment, launched my website, started recording, and the rest is history. And whether you want to start a podcast or a blog or a YouTube channel, I really believe that your audience is out there and they're waiting for you. And so I want to help you get your message off the ground and into the ears of the people that need to hear it the most. And since starting Seek the Joy podcast, it's been so incredible. I've received so many requests and messages from people really all around the world asking me how I did it and if I can help them launch a podcast too. And so through these ebooks, my goal is really to share what I've learned and how I started my show and all the knowledge and the passion that I've I guess, accumulated over the last almost two years to help you streamline your podcast. And so whether you're in the brainstorming phase or ready to launch, this guide is definitely for you. My goal is to provide you the space and the tools to dream, create, and launch, all while giving you the practical advice and insights that you need to make your dream show a reality. It's so funny. I never anticipated that Starting a podcast, starting Seek the Joy podcast would have such a impact on my life. It's no secret that starting a podcast and being in this space has completely changed the direction of my life and my career. And the best part, what I really love so much about podcasts, about podcasting, is its capacity to connect us, to bring us together around shared experiences, whether it's an interview or a true crime podcast or storytelling or even podcasts that are about the news. I mean, we're coming together, we're tuning in, we're listening. It's around shared experiences. It's about bringing people together. And what is so cool about podcasts is that they come in all shapes and all sizes, and there truthfully aren't any rules. I mean, the capacity to be innovative within this space is truly endless. And it's also such an amazing and beautiful space to explore your creativity and to let it shine. And so filled with tips and tricks, this guide, the Seek the Joy Guide to Podcasting and also the guide to pitching guests will walk you through the step-by-step process that I use to launch, develop, and grow Seek the Joy Podcast. And so I'm so excited, seriously, to help you share your magic with the world. And I'm going to include the links to shop and check out these guides in the show notes for today's episode. And I would just love it if you would check them out and let me know what you think. And honestly, there are, yes, there are so many podcasts out there, but there is nobody out there that is you. And I really believe that if you feel called to start a podcast or a blog or a YouTube channel or whatever it is, you should totally do it. You should put yourself out there in this new and different way and share who you are, share your magic, your voice, your joy, what it is that you want to share with the world. And it's so interesting because while I was putting the finishing touches on both ebooks this past weekend, I realized that 
I really wanted to record an episode and share my experience creating something new and different and putting, I guess you could say, my knowledge and passion out into the world. And I have been experiencing so much resistance. In fact, I originally planned to release these two ebooks back in June. And this past weekend, I realized just why I was experiencing so much resistance. And if I'm being totally honest, straight up just fear and anxiety and worry over launching and sharing these ebooks with the world because of imposter syndrome. I'm no stranger to imposter syndrome, and I have a feeling that you aren't either. And according to Google, according to the internet, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where an individual doubts their accomplishments and has a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. Hands up. Okay, hands up if this is you. I currently have both hands up. I'd have both feet up right now if I could because this is exactly what I've been experiencing. I think that we all experience imposter syndrome to some degree, right? I mean, how often have you denied or dismissed your accomplishments and instead of crediting yourself for what you've accomplished and what you've done and created, you instead chalk it up to luck or good timing and just flat out dismiss it. I mean, have you, I don't know, been praised at work or received a promotion and instead of being excited and celebrating it, that voice in your head is instead telling you that they must have made a mistake, that that should have gone to somebody else or it was someone else who deserved that praise and that recognition. I've come to realize as I was reflecting, especially this past weekend, that imposter syndrome shows up, seriously, it shows up when we're stepping outside of our comfort zones and when we're challenging ourselves to do something new and share a little bit more of ourselves with the world, when we're allowing ourselves to be vulnerable, imposter syndrome shows up. We all question at some point if we're good enough, if we're doing X, Y, or Z right. And we all fear, I think to one degree or another, that somebody (laughs) is going to discover that we're truly faking it until we make it. Like this is often my life motto, fake it till you make it. But then I'm always worried that someone's going to realize that I'm faking it (laughs) till I make it. And so these feelings, this worry, this stress can be paralyzing and debilitating. It causes feelings of low confidence or it forces you to doubt yourself, it causes stress and anxiety and often shame and feelings of hopelessness. Basically, imposter syndrome has this way of attacking your confidence and changing your inner dialogue to the extent where you just don't do the thing. You don't allow yourself to step outside of your comfort zone, to step forward in the way that you want to step forward, to hit publish on the thing that you want to share. I mean, when I set out to write and design and ultimately publish these eBooks, the stress and anxiety I experienced actually kept me from looking at and working on both projects for three or four months. Like I wouldn't even open the file on my computer because I felt like I had no business writing these ebooks, that there are people out there who are more successful in this space who should be sharing this content. Who am I to do this? Seriously, was like the phrase and the sentence that kept coming up more times than I can count to the extent where I would think that and then I would just not do it. Like I would not look at it. I would not work on it. I have muscled through feeling not good enough in so many areas and aspects of my life for a really long time. And there are periods of time where I don't doubt myself and I feel really confident and excited and like I can do whatever it is that I want to do. And then there are times where doubting myself and questioning myself is so profound and prevalent that it just completely takes over. This is a topic and a subject that we've talked about 
so many times on the podcast. I remember early on a conversation with Lisa Fireman of Rose Colored Roundup, and we we talked about being young millennial women and just feeling like total imposters in the space that we're in and in wanting to share and do and put ourselves out there, but feeling like a total fraud, like Maybe you don't have the experience or the training or you didn't go to school for the thing that you want to do. And then feeling like you have no business being in those spaces and doing what it is that you want to do. So I couldn't come on here, I guess, and introduce and share these two ebooks that I'm really, really proud of and really excited about without talking about really honestly talking about the imposter syndrome and the fear and the anxiety that I've experienced along the way. And then also talking about why it was important for me to ultimately push past these feelings and to hit publish and to share. Because being a podcaster, being a content developer, a producer, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're doing, those are just three words that describe what it is that I'm doing. It doesn't come easily all the time. Often you have to push past these feelings of doubt. Often you have to push past what it is that you're experiencing to challenge yourself, to force yourself outside of your comfort zone to do what it is that you want to do. Because I think we can often look at people who are putting out content, who are sharing, who are going to school to be lawyers and doctors and accountants or getting up on YouTube or in front of a camera or they're writers or they're actors or whatever it is, we we don't always talk about what it takes to actually do the thing. We just see the end result. And sometimes even imposter syndrome stops us before we've even started, right? Like we let pressure and expectations and my good old friend performance anxiety get in our way. I think it's because as humans, we're achievement driven and we're goal driven and we want to achieve and do big things. And so that often means that we put more pressure on ourselves than we actually really need to. It's both this like internal pressure, this performance anxiety on the inside, and then also this external pressure that we experience too, because we're often measuring who we are and our ability to do things and achieve big things against the achievements of others. So it's like you have this performance anxiety that's self-inflicted, that that's internal. And then you also have this comparison trap that we all get stuck in that's on the external. We have to stop, I guess, first of all, putting so much pressure on ourselves, but then we have to stop comparing ourselves to others too, because who you are is unique. What you have to offer to the world is needed. And so who cares if somebody else is already doing it? They're not doing it in the way that you're going to do it. And there's someone out there that can learn and benefit from what it is that you want to share with the world. So don't allow imposter syndrome or fear or anxiety or doubt or worry to stop you from doing what it is that you want to do before you even give yourself the chance to do it. So When I realized this weekend that what I was feeling and experiencing was in fact imposter syndrome, I really realized it actually on Saturday night when I was forcing myself to actually look at and work on the eBooks for the first time in probably three months. I realized that ultimately it was time to take back control, to not let my mind spiral out of control and into this trap of worry and fear and doubt, and to not let fear and anxiety win and to truly allow myself to recognize and own who I am and what I've created and that I can do this. I can do what it is that I set out to do. I can hit publish on two ebooks and do something that I've never done before. But to do that, I had to actually own for probably the first time ever that I'm a podcaster, that I'm a content developer and creator, and that I'm a producer, and that I've been doing this for almost two years. Oh my God, it's almost been two years. And that I actually do, in fact, know what it is that I'm talking about. And the minute I said this to myself on Saturday night, it was like, holy shit, Sydney, mind blown. You can do this. Don't put limitations on who you are and what you can do and what you want to share. So I guess my advice to you would be claim who you are. 
Are you an educator or a photographer, a podcaster, a speaker, a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, an accountant, a content developer, a motivational speaker, a life coach, a therapist, a business owner, an entrepreneur? I mean, whoever you are, claim it, own it, and above all else, embrace it because when we claim who we are, we allow ourselves to reframe and change our inner dialogue. Like, hello to that positive self-talk. Like, where are you at? You're so needed right now. Because when we reframe and change our inner dialogue and we embrace that positive self-talk, we allow ourselves to shift and change our mindset too. When we fully embrace the knowledge, our knowledge, our passion, and the fact that we have something important to share, it allows us to change our mindset around success and what it means to be successful and to be taken seriously and all of that good stuff that goes along with it. I've had to learn, and truthfully, I'm still learning this. Like, I think we're all still learning this. I've had to learn to stop putting conditions on my success and how quote unquote legitimate I am or how legit I feel I am. Does that make sense? Like I'm learning to stop creating these artificial boundaries and benchmarks and to stop saying like things like when the podcast reaches X amount of downloads, then I can be taken seriously in this space. Like stuff like that, like creating rules and benchmarks and markers of our success isn't going to help us move forward in the life and career and impact that we want to have. And so along with that, we have to stop downplaying our success too. We have to stop downplaying who we are and what we're setting out to do. When we're chasing the next marker of success, we don't allow ourselves to revel and enjoy and celebrate and own what it is that we're doing right now, what it is that we're creating and sharing with the world right now. And so I think along with this, it's worth mentioning too That we don't have to have all of the answers and know everything to share our knowledge and our passion and our joy. Because if you think about it, like how do you, how do we define an expert? How do we define somebody who knows, you know, like what it is that they're talking about? I believe, and let me know if this definition resonates, I believe that if you can speak confidently on a subject, if you can share your experience and what you've learned and how to do something, you're adding value to the world. And so that means you're an expert in your space, in that space. Knowledge and learning is endless, right? Like we never stop learning. There's always going to be somebody or something that changes the way we look at something, how we define something. And so we're going to constant, constantly be learning, but that doesn't mean that you can't trust the knowledge and experience that you have right now, that you do have, that you do have command and ownership over. So don't be afraid to be confident in what you do know, and don't be afraid to speak to what you know and to share it. Imposter syndrome, feelings of doubt and stress and worry and anxiety and all of the stuff that goes along with that shows up in different ways and at different times in our lives. And it shows up when we're pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zones and asking ourselves to share a little bit more of who we are and what we're doing and what we're learning and what we've created and the impact that we want to have. And so when it shows up, because I'm learning it will show up, whether we like it or not, we have to ask ourselves to claim and take ownership of who we are. And we have to ask ourselves to change our mindset and our perspective around who we are. And ultimately, we have to put these theories and these philosophies and these words into action and to just do the damn thing, to hit publish, to hit record, to apply to that program, to apply to that job, to show up at your board meeting, to show up in that meeting, to send the email. I mean, whatever it is, it's about putting it all into action because that's how we learn. We learn through doing. We learn through putting our knowledge and our passion in the driver's seat and putting our foot on the accelerator and allowing ourselves to be seen and to show up. 
And yes, we're going to make mistakes. And yes, you're not going to always know everything. I'm sure there's going to be a time in like three to six months where I'm going to remember something else I wanted to add to the ebook and I'm going to add it to the ebook and then share that with everybody and make changes and adjustments. And But that's okay. That's part of life. I think if we wait for perfection, if we wait to have all of the knowledge, which by the way, we'll never have, we'll be waiting forever to do the things that we want to do and to hit publish and to share and to apply and to show up in the ways that we want to show up in the world. And so, oh, I've said this so many times, but I really do believe that we're all born to do big things, to share our stories and our voices and our projects that we're just so passionate and excited about. So remember that you're here for a reason, that you're where you, you're at in your life, in your career, in your job, in your relationship, making decisions about your career and your life and your happiness and your joy for a reason, and that you're worthy of it all, and that you're much better than you think you are, that you know a hell of a lot more than you give yourself credit for. And so I think we have to remind ourselves of these truths, of these statements, that we are here for a reason, that we are making the decisions in our lives for a reason, that you're worthy, that you're better than you think you are, that you know more than you think you give yourself credit for. Those statements, we have to remind ourselves of those truths as often as we need to. Don't be afraid to remind yourself of them when you need to remind yourself of them. Because at the end of the day, we're our biggest cheerleaders and healers and mentors. And it's up to us to really believe in ourselves first. So don't let fear and anxiety stop you from sharing your light and your magic with the world and going for the things that you really want to go for. And Don't be afraid to put these thoughts and these dreams into action. Go out and seriously be who you're meant to be and share what you're meant to share and push that negative self-talk to the back of the audience, of the car, in the trunk, out of the car, like whatever it is, don't be afraid to push it to the side and to push imposter syndrome to the back and to the side where it seriously belongs and to put your thoughts and your dreams into action. And so it was so important for me to hit publish, to share these eBooks, to share what I've been working on and to prove to myself that I could do this and prove to myself that no matter the negative self-talk and the feelings of being a fraud or not knowing what it is that I'm doing or this sense of imposter syndrome, that despite these feelings that I can do this and that I can share and that after almost two years, I know what it is that I'm talking about because I've done it and I've experienced it, and I'm still learning so much about this space. And it's really the space that I want to be in and to share in and to develop in. And so I'm just so excited and grateful to share with you guys what I've created and to finally put it out into the world and to seriously just watch you create and develop and grow and share your podcast and to be there to support you along the way and to tune in when it goes live. So Thanks for listening to this. I'm, it's really important for me to be open and honest and to share these reflections, I think, in real time as it's all happening and unfolding and as I'm pushing myself outside of my comfort zone um, to hit publish and to share. So today is a really big day. This week is a really big week. I'm nervous, but I'm excited at the same time. And so I've included the links to shop and share our brand new guides. It's the Seek the Joy Guide to Podcasting and the Seek the Joy Guide to Pitching Your Dream Guest. The links are in the show notes for today's episode. You can also go to www.seekthejoypodcast.com slash seekthejoyguides to check them out. Don't forget to subscribe to Seek the Joy Podcast. Share this episode. Share the podcast with your friends, with your family, on your social media channels. Join the conversation. We are at Seek the Joy Podcast everywhere. And another great way to support and share the show is to leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or really wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. And when you do, take a screenshot of that review, send it to sydney at seekthejoypodcast.com. I will send you our new and improved guide for infusing more joy into your life. I mean, talk about Seek the Joy guides. This was the first guide I ever created and I've sent it to over 100 of you. And I'm so grateful for that. 
So when you leave us that rating and review, I will send you that guide. And it's a really great way too for us to connect outside of the show, for me to hear what you thought about this episode, um, whether all of this just resonated with you. It's a great way too for me to hear any feedback about our new guides. I'm really excited and grateful to share this with you guys. As you know, I'm getting ready to celebrate, really celebrate with you two years of Seek the Joy podcast. And so I would love to hear from you and feature you on a special anniversary episode that will air in October. So I'd love to know what has Seek the Joy podcast meant to you? What impact has this show and the community had on your life? What's been your favorite episode? What topics have you enjoyed? Um, How did you find the show? I mean, even if you just want to say hi, I would love to hear from you. So you can reach out either via email, sydney at seekthejoypodcast.com or leave us a voicemail at our special new um, podcast phone number. It's 310-601-8334. Call in, let me know the impact the show has had on your life, what it's meant to you. Just say hi, whatever. I'd love to hear from you and to feature you. And of course, we'll leave all of this information in the show notes for today's episode as well. All right, guys, that's it. I'm nervous, but excited and ready to finally share with you what it is that I've been working on to support you in building and creating and developing and growing and launching your dream podcast and to tune in when it goes live. I cannot wait to listen to your shows. And if today's topic too about pushing past resistance and imposter syndrome resonated, I'd love to hear what your experiences have been like too. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you right back here next week for another Seek the Joy Tuesday.